it's me again, Blob. Uh, you might have noticed that I've been doing this a little bit uh, less and less. Well, that's because I, um, that's because I now, uh, group all of the movies that I plan on reviewing into little, um, groups. I, 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 I take them and I, and I put them in little uh, kennels, I put them in little fences, and I, and I just sheep herd them, I herd them into their little groups so they can, you know, procreate and whatnot, and, uh, that's what I do now. And so I, uh, and so I'm doing that right now with a bunch of movies for this month, and, uh, the month, of course, is not February, it's the previous month, January, but that's not going to be the theme, no! Uh, as you can see by my hastily put together attire, uh, this is going to be a themed month, um, about bear movies, yes! I'm going to talk about the bear movies of January. Well, uh, by sheer coincidence, there happened to be a bunch of movies that came out in January that were about bears, or at least bears had big roles in them, and so I'm just gonna theme, make that the theme. Oh yay, bear movies! And I happen to be in the same exact body type as a bear. Anyway, um, and it just so happens that all of the movies that are about bears in the month of January, uh, Graviton does not give a shit about. Yes. The main purpose of this review show is that Graviton doesn't give two shits about it, so he just so he just throws it to me, so he just so he just dumps it on to me, he just vomits it on my lap, and I'm like, thanks for tonight's supper. Oh god, why'd I take it there? Alright, okay, so the first bear movie um is the Revenant, yes! Oh big Oscar buzz for this one. Um I'm 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 horribly dating this video by saying this, but I do not know yet whether or not this wins the Oscar for a uh, best movie overall, or even best actor, uh thanks to Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, and of course Leonardo DiCaprio is notorious for being that actor who always gets nominated, but never actually wins it. And so m maybe this will be, maybe this means he'll actually do it. Maybe this means he'll actually get the chance to get the, um, to get the Oscar. Uh, but who knows? What I do know is that, um, is that by the time this comes out, uh, probably everyone will already know uh, what the actual outcome was, and they'll be like, oh, poor Blob and Leonardo, he did not win, and this just reminds us how sad it was that he didn't win. Or it could be like, oh, sweet, he friggin' won, and he, and to think we used to live in a world where he did not win the Oscar. Now let's look back on it on this video about this animated fat man. Well, he's not animated, he's drawn and he's a still frame, but still, let's just, let's just see this fat man talking about it uh, from the past. But I am digressing a whole lot. So anyway, The Revenant, of course, is highly regarded as the most likely film to get the Oscar for best overall film, which means it's probably like the best film of uh, 2015, which is ironic since it technically came out in 2016. Uh, world raw widely released though, not not like not in like select theaters. That in, in select in, in, in like here and there it was released, but it wasn't a, it wasn't released to everybody. Uh, until it wasn't released to everybody until the 2016, 16, and that's when I watched it. Now a lot of people kept hyping up how intense this movie was that oh it's really intense it's 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 really really uh, brutal uh in it the, the violence and the way the characters are it's like really intense man this isn't for the weak hearted and then I watched the film and I'm like oh that was that was actually uh I actually didn't have to like have the uh, 
uh, that strong of a heart to watch this movie. It was, uh, it was okay. Um, in regards to the intenseness. So, you know, uh, if you're, if, so, so if you're ever going to really uh, emphasize to people about how intense something is going to be, or even be like, oh, this is going to be really funny, or this is going to be really scary, or this is going to be really sad, or if this is going to be really intense, like I just said, um, chances are, uh, is that by hyping that so much, you're building up expectations that the movie itself are, is not going to meet. So it wasn't as intense as I was expecting, but then again, did I really want it, want it to be as extent, as intense as I was afraid it would be? Because if it would have, it probably would have killed me. It probably would have given, given me a heart attack, and I would have died in a movie theater, and I'd probably fall on dozens and dozens of people, and I would have killed them. But I thought that the guy behind, um, the, the man behind Birdman did a very good job with this movie, because this movie is, um, this movie is based on a true story, uh, as with, like, 99.9999% uh, of all Oscar debate movies, uh, or, yeah, or, or, or uh, about... That's basically what they're about. They're, they're, they're true stories. That, 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 that's just about a majority of them. Oh, and of course, there's obviously exceptions. Like, this year we get Mad Max, and I g hope to God almighty that's not based on a true story. Although, maybe if you go to one of those, uh, like, New Guinea or something, like, maybe it is actually true. Who knows? But anyway, um, so... The reason why I bring that up is because sometimes, if you have an epic as hell story, because as they say, fact is stranger than fiction, you know, you've got these, uh, you've, you've got these true stories in history that are like, the, 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 that are practically, that practically happened just so they could have a movie made out of them. It's just too perfect not to have a movie. Uh, it's just too perfect not to have a movie made out of it. And this is one of the examples. Um, a guy gets mauled by a bear, and then he's left to, to dead, uh, he's left for dead b uh, by his friends, and his friends are like, oh, let's just leave him there, fuck him. And now, but, but then the mountain man, who's the protagonist of the story, um, uh, survives the mauling, and he's like, hey, those... The asshole screwed me over, so I'm out for revenge. I'm out for their blood. Like, that sounds like a perfect movie. Like, that sounds like a perfect, like, 1980s action movie. You know, uh, the, the perfect, that, that's, that's, that's too perfect not to make a movie out of. And it's so perfect for a movie that they already did in, like, the 1970s. Um, or was it the 80s? I don't remember. But yeah, they already did that. However, apparently, um, they did not do it the right way because no one freaking remembers that movie. What? You really this this movie about this man named Huge Glass that that already had a movie that already happened. I never freaking heard of it. So, and, and this story is too perfect. It's too good of a concept just to you know just to screw up the first time and not come back to. So you know, uh, so so we so we wait. A decade or so before we are no, no, not a decade. No, this was longer, like forty years. I'm sorry, did I say a decade? I meant four decades. Four decades, forty years. They waited till they did it again, and this time they were gonna make it the impactful, iconic level uh, type movie that this type of story deserved. You know, the story that Huge Glass did earn, and that's what they did. That's what they did. This movie is nominated for a whole bunch of Oscars. It might potentially be the one that actually gets Leo DiCaprio that that Oscar he's always been chasing for, you know, he's been rubbing his blood on ladies' faces and he's taking all the cocaines and he's and he's gotten naked and he crawls into horses' corpses for real with his buck axe nakedness, his buck ass nakedness, and he takes drugs with um and he takes all the drugs with um Jonah Hill and all that, all of that, and he does all the that for the Oscar, but he never gets it, and now, now this is the chance, this is the chance that this, this, this is his destiny, and it all, and it all be because of huge glass, and because that was too perfect not to make a movie out of, and they finally did it, they could have screwed up big time, um, you know, uh, by not giving that true story the justice, you know, because there are 
times where you've got this, you know, a story in history that's too perfect not to make a movie out of, and then they fuck it up royally, like, um, like, uh, like Angelina Do- Angelina Jo- D- Jolie did with, um, what was it again, oh, un- Unbreaking, Unbroken, was it Unbroken? I don't even, un- un- uh, yeah, Unbroken, I guess. It wasn't Unbreakable, because that's a superhero movie from M. Night Shyamalan, so I think it was Unbroken. Uh, she fucked that up. I, I know Graviton was a little bit more um, accepting of that movie last year, but I sure as fuck wasn't. No, they fucked that up. But they didn't with this. They did not with this. And sure, sure, there's some things added there that might not necessarily be how it went down. Possibly, you know, a little bit of, uh, dramatizations. But, you know, it, but, 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 but from doing research, it is still the basic... Uh, overall story of that, although it is a little different, especially right towards the end, right towards the end. And no, I'm not talking about the afterlife uh, ghosty ghost stuff, I'm talking about other things that seem a little bit too convenient, but this, but, th well, but I try to, um, I try to make this different from Graviton's videos by not spoiling it, but I do put spoilers just in case I actually do spoil it, because, uh, you know, sometimes I might fuck up uh, or something, but yeah, um, so, so it, it, so it does get a little bit convenient towards the end with how they resolve everything, and it might have made a little bit more sense to go the way it actually ended in the movie, but then again, you know, it, it, it does tie everything in a neat, um, bow in regards to, uh, you know, making a good, uh, overall revenge-type movie, you know, uh, it, it, it does do that. And another thing I'll give this movie is that, um, oh, oh boy, um, when, 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 when I first started this movie, uh, when, when I first started, uh, watching it, I was afraid they were gonna antagonize, um, they were gonna antagonize the Native Americans to all hell in it. Like, they were just gonna, they were just gonna make them look like the evil soulless evil assholes that, uh, that, um, th that white people are notorious for, uh, for, uh, presuming that's how they are for many, many decades. It's not until, I think, recently where we realized, wait a minute, this is an, this is insensitive as fuck, why are we doing this? Like, I was afraid that we would, that they would depict them that way, of being the soulless villains of the movie. And, and granted, you know, that kind of makes sense, since it's from the point of view of the White Mounties, you know, so it's from their perspective. But no, it turns out, no, I had nothing to worry about. They did not antagonize the Native Americans. I mean, sure, they kept calling them engines, like, oh, those were engines. It's like, oh, shit, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure even back then they knew they weren't actually from India, so they just, they just, they, even back then they had no fucking idea. But anyway, um, but yeah, uh, but other than that, they, um, uh, at first it seems like they're gonna depict the Indians in this horrible negative way, but then they actually show that the Indians that, uh, th 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 that started all the chaos at the beginning of the movie, that, that, you know, started all of the horrible, um, uh, slaughter that happens at the beginning of the movie, it turns out that they had their reasons for doing that, their reluctant reasons for doing that. They they have, they have a motive behind that, you know, they're not just doing that because they're like, oh, 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 they're not like that, by the way, hopefully uh, I didn't lose any subscribers with what I just did, but they're, they're not like that, they have their reasons behind it, you know, and, and uh, throughout the movie, they slowly become more and more relatable, you know, like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio becomes best of buddies with one of them, and he saves another from being raped, I mean, granted, he took his sweet-ass time to save that one uh, Native American from being raped, but still, he saved her nonetheless. So, so the Indians turn out... It, it was, so I actually admired how they did that. At first, you think, oh, this is going to be a movie that paints the Indian, the Native Americans. God damn it! I'm just like them! Oh, no! I keep saying Indians when I mean Native Americans. That... At first, you think it's gonna be a movie that paints them in a negative light, but then it turns out, no, no, they're actually, they're pretty cool guys, and, 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 and the, uh, protagonist realizes that in the movie, and he's, uh, and he's best friends with them at the end, kind of, or at least he's, he's met peace with them, and he's, um, he, like, hangs tight with them now, and he, he he's all tight with them now, he's, he's tight with them, but, um, but the, 
but, but what they but what's really antagonized uh, in this movie actually is actually the French Canadians. They're the ones who get antagonized to the point where they're uh, they're ruthless, uh, manipulative, scheming bastard, uh, raping assholes. That those are the ones who who are shown negative light, and I and, and, and so it makes sense that that the Native Americans are not criticizing the movie because they knew they knew they were probably also like at first like hey wait a minute but then as they watch the movie they're like oh hey this, this, they're showing that we're we're, we're freaking cool we're, we're we're all cool the native makers were like wait a minute this movie makes us uh, for th this movie sh reminds people how freaking cool we are we like to we like to stick out our tongues and and we like to catch the snow that's awesome and and, and and we're badasses and we're willing to give leonardo dicaprio some meat from a buffalo that's how awesome we are so uh native americans were really okay with this movie i believe but but the, but the French Canadians, on their other hand, they were the ones, they're like, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? You're making us French Canadians look like assholes. But, 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 but come on now, I, I don't think the movie's like painting a negative light on ne French Canadians in general. I think they're just emphasizing that these particular na French Canadians were assholes. These particular French Canadians, these particular ones were rapists and whatnot. Now, not, we're not saying that all French Canadians are rapists, just just these particular ones, and they've been dead for hundreds of years, so you don't have to worry about them anymore. So, um, anyway, um, so yes, so, uh, what do I rate the movie then? What do I rate, uh, The Revenant? Well, um, now, I, now, uh, now the highest I can give for my score is 5 out of 5, but then again, uh, however, um, h however, um, uh, the thing is, is that, um, everyone is, uh, you know, uh, probably giving this movie a five. You know, this is probably gonna inevitably get the Oscar and whatnot. And, you know, um, and I did bring up some things, but, um, let me see here. Hmm, what should I give this? I think I'll just, I think I'm, really, I'm gonna give this a strong four and a half. And the reason why I give it a four and a half is that it kind of hits all the beats and what you want from an Oscar uh, movie. It's sort of like it's almost it almost feels like it was uh, like it was grown in a lab to be the most ideal film to get an Oscar. Yes, like I felt like I I I, I felt like uh, this this director's previous film, a uh, Birdman, that was something that was worthwhile to get the Oscar because that was taking all the risks. It was unconventional, and this felt very. Conventional, so that's why I uh, take a half away from it, and it's that it's four and a half, four and a half out of five, um, uh, little, uh, li little moss from a tree. And the reason why I chose moss of the tree, um, because a as you probably know from my previous reviews, what I do is I use um foods from the movie as the rating system. And, uh, that's what I do, and so I cho- I choose, um, moss from a tree, I choose tree moss, because that was used as a food when, uh, Leonardo, DiCar Leonardo DiCaprio puts, uh, some moss into his son's, uh, uh, into his son's mouth, being like, okay, here's your final meal ever, vegetables, vegetables, you have to eat your vegetables. Okay, all right, enough talking about The Revenant, because everyone's talking about that, and everyone will after it inevitably wins its tons and tons of Oscars. So let's talk about something else instead. And, um, of course, as I promised at the beginning of this video, this is the bear episode. This is where we talk about bear movies. Yes, this, and as you know, this movie had a bear in it. Now, granted, um, the bear wasn't in it for that long, but still, he he's the one who got the ball rolling. Or was it she? She was the one who got the ball rolling because she was a mama bear. And she sacrificed her life to um to uh to try to defend her cubs from Leonardo DiCaprio, and then she died, which means that those bear cubs are probably gonna become superheroes now and try to avenge uh their mother uh from Leonardo DiCaprio. And that's probably how Huge Glass actually died in history, is he got killed by bear superheroes. But anyway, um, yes, I just realized I, I'm trying to make this the bear-themed episode, and yet I barely brought up the 
bear in this movie that made it um, eligible to be under this theme I have for this video. So let's talk a little bit more about it. Um, everyone's been talking about whether or not um, uh, the bear raped Leonardo DiCaprio, and I, I, I can see where they're coming from that, because you can make an argument that he, that the bear did not rape Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio, but at the same time, you know, there are a few scenes in this movie, you know, during that bear fight, I mean, where the bear just, like, gets himself on top of uh, of Leo uh, several times, like, in both in, in both uh, ways, you know, the traditional um, sex way and the doggy style way, so, uh, there were occasions where it did seem like that, like that bear was, but it was indeed but fucking uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, so I can see where that's come from, but, you know, it, it, but, but, but so I'll, I'll give this this. Um, a, lot, a lot of people also criticize that he looked too CGI, the bear. Like, oh, it's too fake of a bear. Well, do you really think they would have gotten an actual bear, though? Do you really think they would have gotten an actual bear uh, to maul Leonardo DiCaprio? Like, hey, let's just freaking kill Leonardo DiCaprio. Let's fuck it. Let's just do that for the sake of realism. No, no, they wouldn't have done that. Of course they would have used a CGI bear. Now, you could also say, like, well, there's also, um, there's also practical effects. They could have gotten someone in a bear suit and, like, get some people from Jim Henson to make a bear puppet. Yeah, but, 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 but still, you really want it to be physical. You know, you want this to be as realistic and as tense as possible. You know, you want an actual bear fight. And, 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 and even though practical effects are still warranted and still is able, you sh should be able to do now, you know, in, in spite of all this CGI, still, there are some things that they're limited to with that. And so you really need to be intense. You need to be quick. You need to be all down the nitty gritty. So you need to be quick in everything. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you, you, you just need special, uh, CGI for that. So I don't mind the CGI bear. In fact, that made, that, that's one of several CGI bears we'll see, um, uh, we would see in the month of January in the movie theaters. And that was just the first of many. So goodbye, bear. I'm sad you were stripped naked after uh, Leonardo DiCaprio killed you. Uh, but, but hey, you, you gave him a run for his money, didn't you, bear? Uh, sorry about your cups. I will raise them. I will raise them as their own. Oh, wait a minute. This movie takes place hundreds of years ago, so they're already dead. Whoops. But anyway, um, okay. So, so now I'm done talking about the Revenant. Now I'm done. So let's move on to the next bear movie of January, and that one is Norm of the North. Yes, Norm of the North. Oh, wait a minute. I just realized something. I never watched this one. Whoops! Whoops, sorry guys. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh man, I, I can't believe it. I mis I misled you. I made you think I was gonna review this movie, but it turns out nope. I didn't I forgot to watch it. Oh man. Oh dang it. Although now that I think of it, you know, may maybe I shouldn't be too sad that I didn't watch this movie. Oh no, I didn't watch a shitty direct to DVD animated movie that somehow wound up on the big screen somehow. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I know how it goes. I know for sure that this was originally intended to be on, um, to be just straight to DVD. I know that for a fact without even reading anything about it. You know why? I see these kind of movies all the time at the stores where I go to places where I go to DVD stores and I'm looking for some, you know, some collectibles, you know, I'm looking for some DVD box sets and whatnot. And, but then I come across these cheap ass animated movies with these, um, celebrity guest stars that are like famous enough for you to have heard of but not famous enough for these movie companies to actually afford. And, you know, there's tons of movies like this. You know, there's tons of these cash-in movies that are trying to be like Pixar and um, DreamWorks. And, you know, they just want a quick buck, so they just, like, um, they just, like download the cheapest um, uh, DVD animator program they have, and they put together this movie, and then they put it, slap it onto DVD releases and whatnot. And, um... 
You see, you, you see those kinds of movies all the time, um, you know, uh, you, you, at, at DVD stores that are for like $5 um, and a $5 bin, and you also see a, oh, a shitload on Netflix. Like, Netflix is just riddled with those uh, cheap animated movies, you know, it's, it's, and it's obviously for a quick buck, buck. And this one's, and somehow, somehow by a miracle, I don't know how they did it, but somehow, maybe someone just could, did did a whole lot of uh, leg pulling. Maybe there was some uh, some sex involved, but somehow uh, this movie managed to make it to the big screen. I don't know how, but it happened. And uh, but does that but does that mean I have to deal with it? No. Okay. This is just like when I'm at the DVD store. I'm like, oh look, there's this cheaply made movie that was like made using five bucks. And they want me to pay five bucks for this five buck made movie. No, it's not even worth that. Fuck it. So yeah, so that's what I say to that. I I continue to say no to those cheap pieces of shit. So uh, that's what I have to say about Norm of the North without even watching it. Without even watching it. And besides, you know, if you're gonna tell me, wait a minute, but you but you promised us bear movies, and you skipped over one of the only bear movies that we had this January. There was The Revenant, and then there was this. And you skipped out on the animated bear movie. Well, ju well you guys should be lucky, because it just so happens, it just so happens that um, that was not the only animated bear movie we got in January. No! There is another. There is another. And unlike Norm of the Mor North, this one used more than $5 to produce. This was, this was actually uh, something that actually had production value and is actually um, made by a legitimate studio that I actually trust. In fact, I even use them as an, a rep as an example of what shitty-ass films like Norm of the North tried to rip off, and that, of course, is DreamWorks. Yes, now, of course, DreamWorks is guilty of a couple of cliche-type movies because there used to be this era in um, the early 2000s where just just about every CGI, just about every single CGI, CGI animated movie you had was about a bunch of animals being like, "Hey, the humans don't know that we're more anthropomorphic than they realize. Let's have parties!" Yay! Like we had like three thousand hundred and forty-seven of them in the uh, early two thousands. You know, uh, mid to early two thousands. But it wasn't a. But after a while, it, it it began to simmer down, and then we started getting uh, movies that were actually about unique concepts again. Finally, finally, I think it was How to Train Your Dragon that knocked us out of that. However, there was a movie before um, How to Train Your Dragon that I think is also um, is an also an example that knocked. Um, that knocked DreamWorks out of this, uh, out of this loop of just, of just, uh, animals doing we of doing party stupid stuff all the time. And that film that is, uh, credited for doing that, I believe, or one of them is Kung Fu Panda. Yes, Kung Fu Panda went against that formula, you know, uh, that formula that Norm of the North tried to do, even though, uh, someone forgot to tell them, like, hey, it's not 2005 anymore. This, this, this type of, uh, th 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 this formula doesn't really go swell anymore. And plus, we kind of already did this with open season from Sony. So why the fuck is this movie doing it a decade later? I don't, I, 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 I gotta get off this Norm of the North rant. Anyway, so yes, uh, what was I talking about? Ah, uh, yes, Kung Fu Panda. Now, you might be telling me, hey, wait a minute, Blob. Oh, by the way, this is a few blobs of your time. Um, man, I, I didn't realize that I should have said the title of this series until just now. I, I realized that I should, that I forgot to mention the title of this friggin' series. Sorry, um, that, don't worry, there was probably a title that lets you know, like, there was a title, seek a text that lets you know, uh, so that's all fine and good. But anyway, now I'm gonna get to the nitty gritty. Um, anyway, so you might be one, so, so you might be asking, um, me right now, hey, Blob, now wait just one minute, isn't Kung Fu Plant Panda exactly like the movies you just described, you know, those cookie cutter, um, animals 
get together and have a good time type movies. Well, guess what? No, the answer is no, fuck you, no. No, you see, even though this is about animals and they're talking and stuff, um, they're, they're not, it, it does not take place in a world where animals are more anthropomorphic than humans realize, and the humans are just off doing their own thing. No, no, humans don't exist in this world, and I know you're also gonna say, wait a minute, aren't we, gonna, aren't we about to get a movie from Disney that's that, that exact concept in a couple of months? Well, yeah, but however, that movie takes place in the modern day, and this does not. No, this this takes it to a place that I don't think has been explored that much in um, in regards to anthropomorphic animals, and that is, of course, ancient Asia. Um, I would say China, but I'm not completely sure. Uh, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna say China. Yes, ancient China. Yes. Um, and, and it has a kung fu themes. You know, it's, it's very much a, a tribute to classic kung fu movies. You know, uh, Bruce Lee type movies and films. And I have no idea what those movies are like. But I am glad that they are doing this. You know, um, some people are like, oh, they're just making money off of stuff that kids have never heard of. And it'll make the kids think that uh, this is all original and stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Well, 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 shut your... Well, shut your um, cynical ass up, because guess what? Sure, those kids might think that these types of concepts are new to them now, you know, the Kung Fu film, uh, because of Kung Fu Panda. However, give them a few years. That because afterwards, because when they get older, they are going to realize, wait a minute, there's a bunch of older movies that this was an homage to. I'm going to check those movies out, and they're going to become a big kung fu fan because of it. Now some of them will be like, wait a minute, I don't know what these people are saying, or how come these people's words don't match the shape, how come the words that these people are saying don't match the shape of, uh, the, of their mouth as they say it, and some of them will be turned off and they'll be like, ah, oh, whatever. I'll just get my Kung Fu from Kung Fu Panda. However, others, others will stick to it. They'll be like, holy shit, this is freaking awesome. I love this. Yes. So I think that's the point. Uh, that's one of the points of a Kung Fu Panda is using it as a gateway drug to Kung Fu, to classic Kung Fu films. You know, it creates some, a new generation of Kung, Kung Fu fan, of Kung Fu movie connoisseurs. Yes, um, the, the introducing them to that concept and being like, oh, this is freaking cool as fuck. Yeah, Kung Fu! Oh, yes, um... And I think that's where, uh, Kung Fu pa pa you know, that's what Kung Fu Panda excels at. And, you know what, this, this movie, um, I, you know, is, is probably one of the first films, you know, uh, I, I, I know a lot of people give credit, uh, to, um, I know a lot of people give credit to How to Train Your Dragon for being, uh, the, uh, for, for being, like, one of the first Pixar, uh, sorry, fuck all of the rookie mistake, I mean, um, one of the first, DreamWorks animated movies. One of the first DreamWorks animated movies to uh, take it seriously, you know, to break that formula of a bunch of animals having a party, break that formula, and do something, uh, you know, interesting, to, to, to tell an interesting story, you know, use the fact that this is freaking animation, you know, you, you, you are not, uh, you know, you are not clinged to shackles, to the shackles of live action, no, you can do literally anything you want, well, not literally anything, because, you know, it has to be under a PG range, uh, because this is a kid's film, but still, you can do anything you want, so why not tell stories? Stories you wouldn't have you otherwise um, have heard been told before, and that's what, uh, and I believe that's what um, uh, How to Tra Train Your Dragon did. And I know you're going to be like, oh, that's based on a book, but still, but still, it, it told us a story we had we hadn't really uh, seen that too much explored within, um, you know, uh, the realm of CGI animation. However, um, if you want to get real original, if, if, if you want to bring up the idea of originality and use that as a weapon against this argument I am creating, then, okay, fine, let, let's give you Kung Fu Panda then, because that is original. Yes, I know I just said it's an homage to Kung Fu films, but keep in mind the, original, the originality of it is the fact that they're using that concept to make an animated kids movie out of it. They're using these bloody ass R-rated type Kung Fu movies be like, hey, let's. Well, what if this was made for kids? Let, let's do that. Well, of course, the go. Of, of course, the no-brainer is to make Bro Bruce Lee a panda. So let's do that, and let's turn Chuck Norris into a 
friggin' uh, to in, into a friggin' daddy long legs. Oh, sorry, not a daddy long legs. Um, a uh, a uh, prey mantis. Yes, a prey mantis. Let's do all that. Whatever. Let's just friggin' do it and to do it. Yes, so uh, I believe that is what is original. That was, and, and, and from my memory, that was one of the first uh, Pixar. Uh, God damn it! Why do I keep saying this? Um, DreamWorks film. This was one of the first DreamWorks films to do that. To um, to realize like, hey, wait a minute. Uh, this this company might be more capable of uh, doing cool, unique concepts than I realized. Because there was a while where I was thinking, oh, I think um, I think um. I, 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 I think DreamWorks is just trying to, you know, uh, is just trying to be like Pixar, except they're half-assing it a lot of the time. But that's only their early days. You know, that was only during their, um, uh, Shark's Tale, uh, and, um, uh, the first few Madagascar films, and Over the Hedge, and, uh, and, and the Shrek sequels. That's when I had those doubts about DreamWorks, but but Kung Fu Panda, however, that was the film that that reinvigorated this type of uh, confidence I had for them. Where I'm like, wait a minute, they can tell exciting stories worth uh, putting into animation, and I think that was the first ones to do that. And so um, now that I've talked about uh, Kung Fu Panda, the history of the first film, um, let's talk about uh, this new one now. You know, Kung Fu Panda Three. Yes, they're up to their third one now. Third Kung Fu Panda film. Now, at first, n n n now let's face it. Um, when it comes to sequels, a lot of the times, uh, the common thing is, oh, the first one was full of uh, all, all this energy and whatnot. And you you could go either way with the second one, with the second sequel t to a movie like this, where you're like, okay, um, this isn't really as good as the first one, but it's okay, you know. Or it can be like, ah, it's just as good, but it's not better. Or it could freaking uh, suck as fuck, or uh, is all fucking. It can freaking suck. Or it can actually be, be freaking better and more original than the first, sorry, more memorable than the first one. And I, and I believe that's what happened to How, Your Tra How to Train Your Dragon 2. Now, in regards to Kung Fu Panda, however, I thought its second one was uh, just as good just not better. I, it didn't feel like it was better. And I know that's not the point of um, sequels. The, the point is not to make a better story than what you did before. Although some people might have that mentality. I don't. I think the point is to um, continue that story. You know, find new stuff to do. And they did do that in uh, Kung Fu Panda 2. However, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't help but have felt, I, I, I couldn't help but feel a little bit underwhelmed by it. You know, just a, just a little bit of underwhelmed. And I think reason why is because I used to see sequels as this thing where you would only do three and that was it, you know, um, uh, and, and that's how I saw them, like, oh man, just one more, or two more, and that's it, oh man, and however, um, I, I, th I think this was a mistake on the, uh, on the, uh, producers, uh, uh, on the producer side, because, uh, right after the first one came out, they, they, uh, clarified that, hey, we're gonna do a whole bunch, we're gonna do a total of six Kung Fu Panda films, yeah, six, and I was like, oh boy, oh, this is gonna be some decade, or they're gonna do this, and, and, and judging by the rate that they recently announced for themselves, because they recently announced that they're gonna, um, um, they're reworking their schedule, they're they're rebranding themselves, and they're only going to do two movies a year, and that has backed everything up on their uh, pipeline at DreamWorks, and what that seems to mean is that that means that if, if we are indeed going to get our um, promised six uh, Kung Fu Panda films in total, it's going to take like, I don't know, like 20 years to do it, I think, at this rate, like 20 years Till we get that Kung Fu Panda franchise all complete. Oh boy. Oh god. Um. I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about that. So because of that, I, I, I guess I didn't feel too whelmed with the second one. Because I'm like, oh, what's the point? We're just going to get like four after this one anyway. So whatever. Um, we're just going to get a, we're just going to get four more after this. So what's the point? Meh. However, um. In recent news, however, it seems like they've gone back on that a little bit, and they say that they are still planning, uh, you know, if, they're, if they are going to make more after this third one, after this third one, it's going to... Uh, 
however, what they said is it's going to be a, it's going to depend on a lot of conditions. Um, you know, uh, if they want to make more, because they have said that if we're going to make more of the third one, yeah, it is going to be six. It's going to be six films in total. However, we're only going to make more if there's a chance to, if this perfect story is there for us to do, if, if we know there's a good reason to do it, if we know there's the great story to tell. And judging by, uh, this movie, you know what? Um, I feel like... This this uh th this universe that K Kung Fu Plan Panda uh takes place in, you know what? That is worth exploring a little bit more. You know that is worth uh finding a little bit more themes in. Granted, you could uh you could make the case that because of the series that's still friggin' in production right now. Like remember the anim the uh, TV series that Kung Fu Panda had? It started in 2011, like right after the second one. Remember that show? Well, apparently it's still friggin' on. Um, yeah, it's still on. What the fuck? Yeah. So my concern is that they're gonna explore every possible concept imaginable. So by the time they get to making more movies, they're like, wait a minute, the um the series did this like 47 times already. So what's the, so why bother at that point? So however, I don't watch the series. So if they do stuff that's kind of similar to the series and the movies, I'll be like, hey, whatever, I don't watch that anyway. So it's new to me. It's new to me in this movie because I didn't watch the original. So screw that. But what I'm saying is that it's not just the universe I want to see continue being explored. Because there's lots of character things too. Now one of the valid criticisms to say about the Kung Fu Panda films is that they have a whole bunch of cool potential characters there, you know. And that, now granted that's probably why we have the series to explore those characters. But still, we want to see those ex characters explored here too we because they're too interesting not to see explorations on them you know this movie has the furious five in it you know uh, why have a whole team of these five um badass kung fu masters who are all animals by the way you know so that makes them even more badass by the default why have all these characters in there you know each voiced by a freaking celebrity voice actor, you know, you got Jackie Chan, you got Seth Rogen, you got David Cross, you got Lucy Liu, and you got Angelina Jolie, who I just mentioned earlier, uh, butt fucked, um, uh, Unbroken, but anyway, but still, she's badass nonetheless, just not when it comes to directing, just, just not in directing, but anyways, but, but still, they're all badass, and yet, um, they get kind of squandered in this, in these movies, and instead you explore more, um, Poe, you know, uh, the titular Kung Fu Panda, as it were, instead of these characters. And I know there's good reason to, because the films are called Kung Fu Panda, but still, don't give us all of these characters if you're not going to do something with them, if you're not going to de develop them some. And I have been seeing that, however, we do get a few moments here and there with some of the Furious Five, but, we, but, but the one that we see the most out of those five, out of the five team members, is Tigress. Um, we see a lot from her, you know, she starts out um, hating uh, Poe's guts of the first one, and then she becomes more open to the idea of respecting him as an equal, and then we see a little bit of development finding out about her past, and uh, uh, other things that, you know, make up her in the uh, second one, and she also uh, learn, and, you know, and, and we see some learning stuff from Kung, from Poe himself, and some learning stuff from her, and we see uh, some, uh, you know, she, she, and it's shown in that one that she actually cares for Poe in that one, and now we're up to the point where she's actually willing to respect him as a master now, yes, because that's the big story arc of this one, of this new third movie, is that, um, is that, uh, is, is that Poe, now, uh, let me backtrack a little bit, uh, What's great about the Kung Fu Panda films, at least I believe is what's great about them, is the fact that how relatable the protagonist is in them. Because, you know, he's... Because these... Because too... For, for too long, we've had these stories about the, the one, the the, 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 the the best possible person of all times, and how they're freaking awesome, and they're the perfect person in every single way, and, 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 and they're freaking ripped, and, and, and they're the most perfect person as possible, and it's what we aspire to. However, that's not what Paul is at first. He's, he's us. He's the, he's the, um, he's the lazy asshole guy who's, like, got a big 
fat belly. And he never loses it, by the way. He never gets fit or anything, so that's also relatable right there. He's just this he's just this run of mill of the mill guy who's just uh who's just uh who, who's just uh who, who's just a fast food worker, basically. And all of a sudden he gets glory uh thrust upon him. And I know I know that story has already been told, you know, the the nobody who gets turned into a somebody. However, when that nobody turns into a somebody, usually in movies, usually when it happens, they have to go through this physical transformation and they have to become more competent than before. But what's relatable about, about Kung Fu Panda is that is that Paul stays the exact same um, uh, from the beginning of the first movie as he is here, you know. He doesn't try to clean up his act. He doesn't try to become more um, graceful. He doesn't try to become more serious. No, he's still the laid-back stoner asshole as he was in the first movie, you know. He, even in this movie, when he when he attains something glorious, like I said before, I'm, I'm trying to avoid spoiling but yeah, but when he attains something, and you think this is the chance for him to be serious in this scene, no, fuck that, he's still, he's still joking around, he's still gloating about how freaking awesome this is, like, oh, fuck, oh, look at me, look at what's fucking happening in this scene, holy fuck, isn't this freaking awesome, woohoo, yes, he's still us, he still is that guy who doesn't take things till too seriously. Like, sure, of course, you know, he still has that development. He still, um, becomes more serious, and he becomes more, um, competent. You know, he, because, of course, he knows Kung Fu now, and by the end of the movie, he knows something else, which I still won't spoil, because, you know, spoilers. Uh, but yes, but still, even with all that, he still retains his personality. He still likes to, um, uh, you know, uh, be lighthearted about situations, and he still cracks jokes about things, and he still is kind of an idiot. You know, even this movie shows when he gets reunited with his dad. That is not a spoiler, by the way, because that's in the trailer, so fuck you, that's that's the whole point of that movie. Um, yeah, so when he meets his dad, you know, he doesn't know who the fuck that is, and his dad doesn't know who the fuck he is. And, they're, and, and they just leave, and they're like, oh, doopy doopy doo, and they realize, oh, wait a minute, you're my dad, and I'm, and, and I'm the son of you. Oh, fuck. Yeah, so there, he's still an idiot sometimes, you know. Uh, that doesn't mean uh, he's a complete idiot as before. You know, he still develops. You know, he still learns, he's still more competent than he was before, but he still retains his um, laid-back personality, and he's still the bumbling guy who we knew at the beginning of the movie. It's just that now he's capable of stuff, and he's more serious on, on the parts that matter, but, you know, uh, on the stuff that matters, he's still as serious as he can be, and he still takes things seriously, but at the same time, he still hasn't forgotten to uh, be laid-back about things, and, um, you know, take everything... As as a, uh, you know, be uh, whimsical about everything. He's still a child at his heart, is what I'm saying. You know, even his dad is still a child of, of heart. And his whole freaking uh, family and uh, that pa one panda who was originally going to be voiced by Rebel Wilson, but is instead voiced by Jennifer Hudson. And also those two pandas that are voiced by um, Wayne Knight. By the way, isn't it freaking awesome to finally hear Wayne Knight again? Oh, God. I, I was afraid that man was dead or something. I was getting scared. Like, oh, fuck. Where the fuck is Wayne Knight? Is he dead? Is he okay? Is he like sick or something? What happened to Wayne Knight? Well, it turns out now nah, he's, 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 he's doing good. He's voicing pandas now in this movie. It is two of them. Yeah, take that, Jack Black. You only get one panda to voice. This guy got two. Wayne Knight got two. Granted, they um, they only have like they each only have like one characteristic. Uh, one likes to hug, and the other likes to show his um, his uh, horrible inbred teeth. But other than that, you know what? F f fuck it. Wayne Way Knight is back, guys. Um, not sure if we'll see him in any other stuff by vo other than voice working, but it is good to hear Wayne Knight again. So we've talked about the supporting characters, and we talked about Poe himself, the uh, protagonist, of course, and we talked about Wayne Knight. So now let's talk. Uh, the left, the last thing to talk about, of course, is the villain. Yes, um, the Kung Fu Panda films. Uh, are very much, um, you know, they, they follow the uh, Warrior's Way type formula, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that, that that's sort of what superhero movies are um, in the most basic format. And of course, if you're going to have your basic hero story, you know, just done in new, exciting, different ways, of course, if you're going to do that, you still need what puts that all together. And of course, that is 
a villain, yes, and the Kung Fu Panda films, um, uh, do, uh, you know, uh, do that to no end. They have a big villain for each film, you know. If they're gonna follow that formula of superheroes, um, well, not exactly the formula of superheroes, but the formula that superheroes also follows, that means that they need a villain for each film that distinguishes it, yes. And that's what the Kung Fu Mandas do that I'm a really big fan of is that is that each film is distinguished by their villain. You have Tai Lung in the first movie, this badass snow leopard, yes, oh, who's out for blood. And then you have the sequel. And as I said, you know, sometimes you can identify the movie by their villain, especially when it comes to Kung Fu Panda films. So if you are kind of meh on the vil on the movie itself, then you're probably also meh on the villain. And that's the case with the second one, um, with the peacock, yeah. Wait a minute, you go from a snow leopard to a peacock? What the fuck is going on there? Well, how do you go from a snow leopard to a peacock? And it was weird was the imbalance going on there, because the the thing that was really notable about uh, Kung Fu Panda, the first movie, was how serious its villain was. No, yeah, he's not your typical animated movie villain that, that says all these uh, funny quips. Uh, no, no, that's not what was going on with Tai Long. He, he was taking the shit seriously. He was, the, he was the embodiment of what Poe is not, and thankfully not, you know. Poe is not the guy who takes things too seriously, like Tai Long. So therefore, you had a really serious villain, you know, um, with that. You know, he was barely that comedic. And then you had, um, and, and then you had Gary Oldman Peacock. Okay, here's the thing with him. Um, now, he was also serious. He also took things seriously, too. In fact, he, like, freaking committed mass murder. He, he, he killed he killed Poe's mother, uh, after all. He, he's Poe's Joe Chill. What the fuck? He, he's a friggin' murderer, um, uh, the Peacock. And that's why it was so jarring to change. Because they tried to make it just, he, they tried to make the Peacock just as serious as Tai Long, but it didn't, it, 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 it it wasn't the same effect on me because I was like, wait a minute, I get your, that you're trying to make this, uh, you're trying to make this villain serious as hell to, uh, once again contrast with Poe, but however, it's not doing it this time because it's way too jarring that this is a friggin' peacock! Um, this is coming from a peacock, uh, that I cannot get out of my mind. I can't take this seriously because it's a peacock. Now, um, if that peacock was, you know, a uh, bumbling and was like more um, comedic, like I just said with that, oh, hoo, hoo, I'm a villain. L like, like if they did that with the peacock, then I don't think I would have. I, I, I think I would have liked that villain better because you know it's a freaking peacock. You know, um, there's you can't take yourself too seriously when you're a peacock. You know, you might as well uh, be a little comedic with it. So I think that was the thing there was that it was okay to make him just as serious as Tai Long. However, if you're gonna do that, then find a animal that's actually scary, you know, that actually would beat up a panda, like, like a snow leopard last time, but nope, instead you're going for a peacock. What? Um, so yeah, so that was my problem with that, was that, um, I understand that you want to take yourself seriously, but don't do it as a peacock, do it as something actually fierce. Now, now that I talked about those two villains, let's talk about villain number three, the villain in this one. Yes, the villain of Kung Fu Panda 3, and that one is Kai, voiced by J.K. Sinem, Simmons. Uh, he's tired of, he's tired of, um, he, he's lost all hope in Mr. Fantastic. He's, he's lost all hope in Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic will never learn how to properly do the drums, so J.K. Sim, Simmons has given up on him, and instead he's gonna be a yak now. Now, um, yes, a yak. Yak and a yak! Don't come back. So I'm emphasizing real big on the fact that he's a yak, because as I said before, um, you know, uh, you, uh, I, I told you about my opinions on making the second villain a, uh, a, a freaking peacock, so how do I feel about making the third one a yak? Well, I think this is a, um, I think this is a good middle ground between a snow leopard and a peacock in regards to choosing an animal as your villain. Yes, I think this is a good middle ground because it's, it's, you know, you know, you know it, it's a little bit goofier 
to have a yak as a villain than it is to have a snow leopard as a villain. However, it's not as goofy as a peacock. So it's a good middle ground. It's a, it's a good middle ground to have a yak as your main villain. And also, this, and also what balanced it quite well was the fact that this one was a little bit more, um, comedic, but not too much comedic. I was a little bit scared when I watched the trailer for, uh, Kung Fu Panda 3, because at first it seemed like he was just gonna be jokes here and jokes there, all jokey McJokerton, like, uh, like Ultron from the, from Avengers 2, you know, just going way more funny than you need to, um, however, that was just the trailer. It turns out in the actual movie, there's a good balance. Yes, I'm gonna say that. Yes, I am actually gonna have the guts to say this. I think that the balance of scariness and goofiness of the villain of this movie was done better in Kung Fu Panda 3 than it was in Avengers Age of Ultron. I am saying that. The balance was done better. Okay? They knew when to be a little bit light-hearted with this character, and then they knew when they needed to be serious. They didn't, they knew, they, they, they had a good balance of it. They, they reeled in the co comedy of that character that they could have done, and they reeled it back in. They did it when they felt it was appropriate to, but for the most part, he was badass through and through. And that's what I liked about this villain, yes. And, um, and now a valid criticism, again, Again, is that um, they, they do sort of kind of follow a formula in regards to their villains. They all have tragic backstories. They all have stuff that they wanted uh, from a loved one. They used to have a loved one, and then the loved one took something from them, and then they got angry as fuck about it and, become an, and became an evil criminal and tried to kill them and stuff. That happened with, with Tai Long. That happened with the Peacock. And yes, I don't remember the Peacock's name. But it also happened with Kai. However, um, even though they follow that formula, they still did new things with it, though. They still, they still added some new stuff to it. You know, they, they tied in, um, they tied in Master Ugwe. Uh, you know, uh, spoiler alert, sorry. But yeah, Master Ugwe is in the film. And they tie it in with him. And they, uh, bring a bit of a supernatural element to that. Um, to this. And I know supernatural elements have been explored before in these, um, you know, in, in these movies, you know, what with the ghosts and the recurring gag of breaking the vase and the ghosts get free, and they're like, Ugh. And of course, the Wushu finger hold, which apparently causes a, uh, which apparently causes a wave of chi somehow in the first movie. We never really found out what happened to Tai Long, did we? I mean, there is kind of an implication of what exactly happened to him in this movie, so I guess we can kind of take that as a confirmation. I won't get into the details of what, of how exactly, but just keep in mind, there is sort of an explanation as to what happened to Tai Long in this movie, but, but, but it's not outright said. You're gonna have to put two and two together with that one. But anyway, um, so so yeah, we have seen uh, we have seen uh, fant fantastical themes before in these in these movies uh, before. However, not to this level in this one. I won't go too I won't go too much into details, but they do go full on um, fantasy with this one. Uh, you know, uh, especially towards the end uh, with this one. And you know, it's all based on uh, you know it's, it's based on mythology and it's based on people on, on stuff that actually a lot of people do believe in, which is chi. There's a lot of chi themes with this one. So yeah, so they do fully embrace uh, that the mythology side of it. And so I like that too. I liked upping the ante with that. Um, now, does that mean that they might up the ante even further with the uh, other potential movies? I'm not sure. Because I, I'm with the... Uh, filmmakers on this, uh, on this, uh, when it comes to this movie. If they want to make more movies, then fine, you know, as long as there's a good story to tell, and it's worth telling. If there's stuff that you want to do the characters that haven't been done before, and you know, like I said before, I want to see things done with the other characters, especially, you know, even though Tigress is the most developed of the Furious Five, it still wouldn't hurt to see more things with her, and I know she gets like a little tiny story arc in this one, you know, with this kid who's obsessed with her, her number one fan and stuff. Um, but still, I, I want to see a few other things done, too, you know. Um, does that mean that I want to ship Poe and Tigress? Oh, God, am I that kind of fan? Um, I hope not. Am I? Eh, 
Let's see, your cross species. Is that okay? Uh, well, well, Kermit and Miss Piggy do it, so I don't know why it can't be. Although I heard that I I I heard that uh relationship didn't work out too well recently. Oh God. But anyway, um. If it's that kind of story, I wouldn't mind, but you know what, there are other stories they could tell than a romance. You know, there are other stories. They don't have to limit themselves with them. So, you know, I could go either way with that, frankly. Um, but then again, I mean, they did end that Kate Hudson thing where, uh, she did no long- she was no longer into Poe, which was good. I'm like, oh, sweet, good, good, I don't want her to be with Poe. No, fuck it, you're- you're- you're blocking tigers. But I could go either way with that, you know. Uh, just as long as we see some more stories told with this universe. Because I- I do feel like this is a valid enough universe to continue to explore and explore these characters. However, much- much like the producers said, they said that they want to end each film in a way where it's perfectly fine to not keep going, you know. Uh, they went into a way where there's some nice closure with the characters, and that's what they did with this film. Because granted, um, even though they did end the uh, second one that way too, there was still sort of a cliffhanger with that one. Kind of. A little bit. And they resolved the cliffhanger in this one. They, they, they resolved the cliffhanger in Kung Fu Panda 3, and now that they did that, they don't have to keep going. You know, this this movie did not end in a cliffhanger. It ended with a whole lot of closure. And if they want to stay, and, and if they want to end there, it's perfectly fine too. It's it's fine. So um, only keep going if you have the right story to tell. You know, don't run this don't run this thing into the ground like um like friggin' Shrek, okay? Or Cars. Yes, I'm gonna say Cars, even though that's Pixar. Yes, I'm gonna say Cars and the Good Dinosaur, even though that just had one movie. But yeah. Yeah, don't run it into the ground like those films, you know. Uh, only do it if the stars align and it's the perfect opportunity to do it. Otherwise, no! I don't want this franchise to be tainted like so many others, like Toy Story might is about to because unlike Kung Fu Panda, um, I think there's pretty much a good way to end that. The Kung Fu Panda, there is potential, but but with story, Toy Story, it's like, no, fucking stay, stay right where you are, stay, 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 stay at three. No fucking good, keep going, blah, blah, blah. All right, I think I'm done. I'm done with all the bear movies, except for Norm of the North, because I did not review that movie because I want to save my money for stuff that is not inevitable shit. Uh, but then again, I am planning to watch, um, Sausage Party, but oh, who knows, maybe Sausage Party might be freaking awesome. Uh, who's to say? Well, let's find out. But anyway, uh, yeah, so those were the bear movies. Um, I forgot to rate Norm of the North, but, uh, doesn't make sense to rate that since I didn't watch it, so zero. Zero out of five, um, lemmings. Yes, I'm gonna use the lemmings as a rating system for that one, because I think the bear should've just eaten the lemmings, yeah. So, um, th that's what I rate Norm of the North, because I did not watch it, so zero out of four, uh, zero out of five lemmings, but with Kung Fu Panda 3, on the other hand, with Kung Fu Panda 3, I'm going to rate that, um, should I say dumplings or noodles? Dumplings or noodles? Dumplings? Noodles. Um, you know what? Uh, let me see here. Ah, yes. Uh, four out of five, four out of five eggs. Yes, I'm going to say eggs instead, because there were eggs in this movie. Granted, they were used as sort of like a shit joke, but still, um, eggs. That, that's not, that's not going to make it unappetizing for me to think about, mmm, eggs. No, screw it. Eggs. It's going to be eggs, because dumplings and noodles are too predictable. So that's it, guys. Th those are all of the bear movies. Does that mean that I'm going to have other, um, uh, themed movies, uh, uh, in the works for you guys when I bunch these up again? Oh, probably not. Uh, actually, this was just done as pure coincidence that we happen to have bear movies. So I was just like, oh, fuck it. I'm going to wear a bear costume and I'm going to emphasize on how these are all bear movies. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I'm done. So I'll see you guys uh, next time. Oh, that was really exhausting. I'm going to spend um, the whole credit sequence uh, um, breathing heavily now. And it's not just because I'm a fat guy. I'm also going to breathe heavily because... Because it's all over now.
Man, this sounds like I'm having sex, doesn't it? Maybe I should stop. Nope! I'm gonna keep going! It doesn't matter how awkward it gets. Okay, now I'm done.